Okay, in this video, we are going to be working on writing decimals in expanded form. So we already know what standard form. Standard form is like the normal way that you would write a decimal just with the numbers. Just like we would right here. This would be 0 and 32 hundredths. That's completely the, the traditional way that we're used to writing decimals is in standard form. Okay? But today we're going to be working on expanded form. And the whole point of expanded form is to show the place value of each digit. And a really great way to do this is to kind of use a place value chart that I kind of made right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write my decimal in my place value chart. I'm going to use a darker marker for this reason. That's really hard for you guys to see. I'm sorry. Okay. So 3,200. So how could we write that in expanded form? Well, we can see right here that we have zero ones. So we don't have to do anything for that. The next digit we see is that 3. So I'm going to write down a 3. But that 3 really is not worth 3. That 3, according to our place value chart, is worth 3 tenths. So I'm going to do 3 times... 1 tenth to show that that 3 is not worth 3, but it's worth 3 tenths. The next digit we're going to look at is this 2 right here. Okay? But that 2 isn't really worth 2. That 2 is worth 2 hundredths. So I'm going to write 2 times 1 hundredth. So that's showing the place value of that digit, 32 hundredths. Another way to write this is not to use the fraction, but rather to use the decimal. So again, we have the 3, and that 3 isn't worth 3, it's worth 3 tenths. So I could do 3 times 1 tenth, but write it as a decimal. We see a 2 here, but again, that 2 isn't worth 2, that 2 is worth 2 hundredths. So I can multiply this by the hundredths place, because that's the place that it's in. So there's two ways that you can write it. You can use the fractions, or you can use the decimal to do it. Let's try another one. Okay, so I see this number right here. Let's try this one. 0 and 123 thousandths. So again, I can write that in my place value chart. 0 and 123 thousandths. So I look at that 0 and I don't see that it is worth anything. So I'm not going to use it. So I'm going to go to this one right here. And I'm going to ask myself, how much is that 1 worth? And I can see that that 1 is in the tenths place. So I'm going to multiply it by 1 tenth. If I look at this next digit, that 2 what place is that 2 in? So we can see that that 2 is in the hundredths place. So I'm going to multiply that 2 times 100. And then the last digit I see is that 3. But that 3 isn't really worth 3. That 3 is in the thousandths place. Okay? How can we write this without using fractions? Well, we do the exact same thing. That 1, again, is in the tenths place. So I'm going to multiply it by one tenth. That two is in the hundredths place. So I'm going to multiply it by one hundredth. That three is in the thousandths place. So I'm going to multiply it by one thousandth. And you can kind of see with the decimals that I kind of just make the digits in front of it disappear. A little bit. Okay? But here's my question. What if I didn't have a zero in the ones place? What if I had like that digit? Four and one hundred twenty-three thousandths. Okay? What would we do for that four? Well that just goes back to regular expanded form that we practiced at the beginning of the year and that you practice in fourth grade and that you practice in third grade. We ask ourselves, how much is that four really worth? Well, it is in the ones place. 
okay? And then you would say, again, how much is this one worth? Well, it's in the tenths place. How much is that two worth? Well, it's in the hundredths place. How much is that three worth? Well, it's in the thousandths place. Really, the exact same end of the number that's down here. Reason being, the ends of these two numbers are identical. So the ends of them in expanded form should also be identical. The only thing that I changed is the number in the ones place. Okay? So what I want you guys to do is I want you to pause the video and I want you to try writing these in expanded form. And I want you to be honest with yourself. Don't just watch me do it. I want you to try it and be honest with yourself and see what you get. So pause the video right now, okay? Well, thank you so much for being honest with yourself, guys. I appreciate you pausing the video and actually doing those on your own. Let's look over and see if you got the same things that I did. We saw that this was 9 and 45 hundredths. And I looked at the 9, and I saw that the 9 was worth in the 1's place, so I did 9 times 1. I looked at the 4. I saw that the 4 is in the 10th's place, so I did 4 times 1 tenth. Then I looked at the 5, and I saw that the 5 was in the 100th's place, so I did 5 times 100th. Is it okay if you wrote those as a decimal instead? Yes, it is. If you wrote those as a decimal, you would have everything else except instead of the fraction, you have that where the fraction that I put it was. So that is an option too, okay? You look at letter B. I have 2 times 1 tenth and then 1 times 1 hundredth. And again, remember, it is an option to write it as a decimal. That is an option as well. Okay, right here, 8 and 674 thousandths. You get the 8 is times 1, the 6 is times 1 tenth, the 7 is times 1 hundredth, and the 4 is times 1 thousandth. So remember, again, you are allowed to write that as a decimal instead of as a fraction. If you did that, that was okay as well. And again, 0 and 391 thousandths. So again, we can see that that 3 is worth 1 tenth, the 9 is worth 1 hundredth, and the 1 is worth 1 thousandth. So remember, you could have either done it as a decimal or you could have written it as a fraction. The preferred way to write it is with a fraction on part, so I want you guys to really understand that because if they give you a question, that's how they're going to do it. But um, if you do it as a decimal, that's okay with me too because it is technically correct. Okay, so good luck, guys. We'll talk about this tomorrow.